Good evening, everyone. I'm Wendell Jones, and welcome to another edition of The Platform. On this program, we examine national issues. The row between Peter Nygaard and Louis Bacon at Lyford Key over land has gone throughout our country, and indeed, it's international. As Peter Nygaard says that he is fighting for his rights, the right to get to and from his property. And in addition to that, uh, there are some people who have said that Mr. Nygaard is doing some things at his property that is affecting Clifton Bay. Peter Nygaard denies this. And he has marshaled a number of people in the country who have come to his assistance. Uh, there are people who are supporters of uh, Peter Nygaard. Indeed, there are people who are supporting Lewis Bacon as well. Uh, but on our show tonight, we are going to speak with Vivian Wiley, uh, who has been involved in the fight to save Clifton um, many years ago. And uh, he's been on our program before. And uh, there are certain things that Mr. Wiley has heard and seen over the last uh, few weeks that he thought that he should bring to our attention. And so I've invited him here today to be our guest. Vivian Wiley, welcome again to the program. Thank you, Mr. Jones, and hello, Bahamas. It's nice to have you here. Um, you were here, the last time you were here, you talked about your heritage, um, the Wiley Plantation and all of that. Um, and since you were here, uh, you have seen the escalation in the feud between uh, Peter Nygaard and Louis Bacon. Yes. How did you meet Peter Nygaard? I actually met Peter Nygaard about 30 years ago. Mm. I, I'm not just new to knowing Peter Nygaard, but because he was of a different social standing or echelons than me, I was a young man at the time, and Mr. Nygaard was a blooming fashion designer. Um, I met him on the social scene. We played volleyball together at Zemi's that turned into Bahamas Beach that today is Ross and Court. We played down at the old Hard Rock Cafe on the beach down there. And if, as you know, um, Mr. Nagat is an avid volleyball player. Mm -hmm. And this just gets to tell you how, how old I am. Okay. I'm not as old as him, but I was yeah. older than most people. As I said, the, the, the fight uh, for Clifton has been joined by a whole lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. There are scores of Bahamians who have come to the aid and, uh, uh, of Peter Nygaard. Uh, they have talked about what he is doing in the Bahamas. And then there are uh, some people who are supporting the claims of Lewis Bacon. Where do you stand? I stand in the middle. I stand on the side that is right. Okay? Um, as a Bahamian... If my house were to be burnt, mm -hmm. I would like to be able to rebuild it. If I live in a gated community, it would not seem right to me for somebody to block the access and even my personal access to my property. And uh, I believe that my being a generous person towards the Bahamas shouldn't entitle me to me dictating to the government, but as we all know, you let your friends be your friends and you treat your friends as though they are friends and not enemies. And you uh, are making the point that Peter and I got He's a friend. a friend of the Bahamas. Okay, yeah. He has he proven that he's a friend of the Bahamas. How? Uh, from time immemorial, I, I think um, even Mr. Craig Flowers mentioned one time that when he was on the Gulf, the Bahamas Herman Cup team, the national team, they didn't have enough money for uniforms and so on, and Mr. Nygaard personally gave to them. We know of when you and Mr. Wilson were on the commission that was in charge of raising money for the Olympic team. We know that Boxing is something that he also follows. Uh, we know that his philanthropy does not go to a political divide. It goes to the needs 
of our country. And uh, I, I heard, I saw in one newspaper article that, that uh, a, a, a reverend minister said that Mr. Nygaard is playing on the needs of Bahamians. When somebody satisfies a need, I don't think it's a game. If, 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 if somebody, if I am in need and somebody satisfies my need, I don't think it's a game, especially if I am the recipient of the philanthropy. It's not a game. You um, said that you went to Clifton Bay. Of course, you know of the Clifton area. Mm -hmm. And uh, you saw some things. And you, you, you brought a video here. As a matter of fact, you, I believe you did a taping. And, um, right. But I, I would like to, to, to play a little bit of that and have you describe it. Because the audio that you, you had was a little faulty. And I'd like for our producer to, to run a little bit of it so that our public can understand. Now, what is this? That is Nygaard Key itself. That is what remains of Nygaard Key after a 20-bedroom house was burnt down. Okay? Over across the land that you can see behind me, that is Clifton Plantation, or that's the Clifton Heritage Park. Okay? Um, what I'm about to describe here is what is happening in the feud between Mr. Bacon and Mr. Bacon, because Mr. Nygaard really doesn't have a problem with it. Mr. Bacon always wants us to know what the problem is behind Life with Key, but one, they wouldn't remove the gate, and they wouldn't tell the Bahamian people that they are guilty of the same things that they're accusing Mr. Nygaard of. I'm not Mr. Nygaard's lawyer, and Mr. Bacon knows who I am, the coalition know who I am, right? But he, we need to see his property now. He been putting up Mr. Nygaard, putting the heat on him. So what this video is doing is this is showing my brothers and sisters in the Bahamas how close these people live, how well they live, and their problems ain't our problems. So uh, how, 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 how are you getting this now? Why, why are all these Bahamians because, in this feud? Because, because just like when it was down to starting out to fight to save Clifton, there was one person who went ahead of me, Dennis Dames, in the meeting. And after I had a meeting with, well, I, I spoke on the mic at the, at the, at the parish hall, of the church in Life with Key. Um, what you're looking at there, sir, is mm -hmm. the stocks of, of um, um, BEC. Mm -hmm. but, but I challenged the people, I challenged the developers of Clifton Key. Now, Lewis Bacon and his group are the same people who are fighting Mr. Nygaard and using the, the, the media and whatever else means they can to try and make sure that they get their way. The Bahamian people are getting a little tired of this, you know. Oh, I'm tired of it too. That's why I'm trying to show my Bahamian people exactly how rich these people are and where they live. Nobody in, in this country probably has ever seen these pictures of mm -hmm. Mr. Lewis Bacon's house. And I know he probably could be mad, but he need to understand yeah, we mad that, that, that Mr. Nygaard is, is, is constantly in the paper, but he's causing it. What do you mean he's causing it? If he didn't make all this big hellabaloo about, about a bunch of nothing, you'll watch and see. See the house that we, that is, this is Mr. Nygaard's, that's Bacon's marina. Yeah, sit down, sit down, sit down. That is, that is Bacon's house. That is his marina. It's twice as deep as Peter Nygaard's marina, and he has done basically enough to damage the environment by dredging it out. How? how? You mean that channel there? That channel right there on mm. the right-hand side of the screen. Yes, okay. And that is where he can pull his boats in. And if you look, he, his boats are docked in an area that's covered by his house. Mm. Now, see the boats? But he has been there long before Mr. Nygaard. Show the people this is what they didn't do. 
he carved out all of the bedrock. All right? He, he, he carved it out. And this right here is Mr. Nygaard's um, marina. Nowhere to hide any boats. And what happens is Mr. Nygaard's marina was built after Mr. Bacon's marina. So the sand fills it in. Did Bacon get permission to do that? It doesn't matter whether he had permission or not. He has a marina. I'm talking real talk. Mm. Okay? I hope he had permission. I hope Mr. Nygaard had permission. But what we're looking at exists, whether they had permits or not. Okay? These are two rich guys living side by side, rowing over sand with the full in the marina. If I am Mr. Nygaard, I'm going to build something. That whole ledge back there, that was built. That is what Mr. Bacon is complaining about, the ledge in the background, to stop sand from filling in the marina. Mm. Is that what that's, that is for? That is what it is for. That's why I'm looking. I'm showing this to the main. Mr. Mr. Bacon has the forces to have me snuffed out. So Mr. Nygaard ain't paying me to do this. I am tired of them wasting our time about they're going to save the bay. Look at what Bacon did even before Nygaard was here. He dredged the seabed. So what is he talking about? Nothing. He just, miss, if, if Mr. Nygaard guilty, he guilty. Mm. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Okay. Look at the, the size and the spread of the house. Reverend Morris, I mean, been in the back there to see these things. They don't know what they're talking about. That's why I'm on this radio, on this TV station. C.B. Moore, since you raised his name, is, uh, said he's concerned about Clifton Bay. That what you see there is not Clifton Bay. That Clifton is, Bay is further down, eh? The whole area is called Clifton it, Bay. It, the, no, but... But, the, but the, Clifton Bay itself? Yes. The whole area, the bay ain't just one part. The bay is an uh, area like a semicircle. Yes, but there is a beach. Jaws Beach is further down. Okay, Jaws Beach is further down. And what is next to Jaws Beach that is causing the sand? The canal that runs into the other side of Lightfoot Key. Mr. Jones, Mr. Moss don't know what he's talking about. He never been here. And the canal that is causing the sand... To, to, to move or not move on Jaws Beach is the one immediately north of Jaws Beach. And that is the canal that leads into Lightfoot Key. Peter Nygaard didn't have nothing to do with that. A Clifton Bay needs to be saved? No, it's already safe. This is a bunch of rich people. Mr. Nygaard's neighbors, some of the richest people in the world who don't want no black people passing where they live, day or night. And Peter Nygaard is the person responsible for the invitations. They want him out of life with key. We don't have nothing to do with that. What we want is for them to take that gate down so we could have access anyway. Because they could go and bay in town when they want. But we can't go where they live when we want. And this is supposed to be a Bahamas which is equal for all. Yeah, but it, 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 there's nothing wrong with having a gated community. No, but when you have a squabble behind a gated community that they should be able to, to, to settle for themselves because Life at Key has a property owners association. There is some reason why they can't move Mr. Nygaard out or they already would have done it. Is Nygaard Key a part of Life at Key? No. All right, so Nygaard... Nygaard Key is Sims Key. So Mr. Nygaard needs the right of way to get to, to, his, property. to his property. And the, the property owners along the E.P. Taylor Highway, they are the ones what are coming together and putting up all this, whatever they're putting up, calling themselves the coalition and all the rest of that. I'm amazed that some of the people who are on that coalition, they ain't never been in the back of Life with Key mm. to see what I see. You see, when, when you really look at, 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 at what these guys are talking about, I understand why the Prime Minister call it foolishness. Because it's a petty grievance between two neighbors. One neighbor who says, 
what's wrong with me inviting black people? And the other neighbor that says, I don't want no black people to be able to see where I live. But all the time, ringing in our ears is the coalition to save Clifton, led by Lewis Bacon, who supposedly was the leader of the coalition to save Clifton. Was he? No. Reverend Moore said he was the leader. So that's what I, if I was Reverend Moss, that's what I'd be trying to deal with rather than, because he don't know what he, C.B. Moss do, does not know what he's talking about. All he's doing is toting water for that man. For which man? Bacon. Consciously or subconsciously, all he's doing is toting water for Bacon. And he could say to me, him and Mr. Munnins, they ain't ever meet the man. Ha, 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 ha. I know, I'm, I know the nature of the beast. You met Bacon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Bacon didn't, he, he made it sure that I was the only Negro there. Because the rest of them was only talking. And just like he knew they was only talking back then, he know how to make them talk now. Okay. We want to take a break here on the program. Uh, there's much more that we can, want to talk to you about, uh, Vivian Wiley, uh, because, as I said, uh, there are a whole lot of Bahamians who are wondering what this big feud is all about. Two neighbors. And, and you say it's two neighbors, it, and it has nothing to do with saving Clifton Bay. Nothing. Nothing. The two of them, Mr. Bacon is in the wrong for trying to put the spotlight on Mr. Nygaard. Because him and Miss, you saw the two marinas. Mr. Bacon Marina twice as deep as Mr. Nygaard Marina. Mr. Bacon parks his boat underneath his house. He could go to Jabim and come back, no customs, no immigration, no nothing, and pull his boat out of sight. Well, you're not sure of that. You don't know how he gets in and out. But uh, I, don't, I don't have to know. Yes, but... but I don't have to know. What is apparent to me is that no customs are there. And I've been there, and I know ain't no customs there. Okay, let's take a break here. This is the platform, and uh, Vivian Wiley is our guest on the program today. We'll come right back. We're back here on the program, the platform this evening, and we are speaking with Vivian Wiley, and we are talking about the feud that is ongoing in uh, Life with Key or Clifton that many Bahamians seems to be, seem to be so oblivious about. And um, uh, Mr. Wiley is here to, to talk about his experience uh, at, at Clifton. And, um, but bef before we go back to uh, whatever footage you have of uh, Clifton, and uh, Nygaard Key. Um, the opposition has joined the debate as well, the free national movement, uh, from um, the uh, proceedings in the House of Assembly. We are hearing a whole lot of things. We are hearing that the government of the Bahamas seems to be giving uh, Nygaard some special uh, deal. What do you make of this? Um. Mr. Jones, I can be quite frank with you. When I watch the parliamentary channel, I am ashamed at the way those people carry on. A couple weeks ago, we had a fight between a female member and an altercation and a male member. That's not no way for people to be carrying on in the leadership of our country. What do the children see? We have a crime problem already. The minister, the minister, the head of the opposition, I think, is a medical doctor. It is so, I am so ashamed that having had five members of my nuclear family die, and four of them died from cancer, and this man being a medical doctor could come out and say that stem cell research in the Bahamas is to benefit one individual. How selfish. How selfish, Mr. Jones. I may have cancer, 
But he want me vote for a person like him or a party like that, that is coming up against common sense with nonsense. See, I have nicknamed the House of Assembly as the Rawson Square Restaurant and Bar because that is exactly what they carry on. Like, they in a sports bar, the speaker says order, there is no order. The speaker says order again, there is no order. If you are in a class teaching civics and you show the tape of the last sitting of the House of Assembly to a group of students, when the teacher says, be quiet class, based on how the opposition is acting, that means don't shut up, don't sit down. Because the teacher is the symbol of authority in the class. And the leader of the opposition disregarded the authority of the speaker by acting the way he did. What message are they sending to the children? My goal with Clifton is to get it in a book and teach Bahamian history. What Mr. Bacon wants to happen in Life at Key is not my business. Mr. Nygaard is a giving person. That could affect me. He putting his money in the stem cell. You know what? If the Bahamas sleep, you look a gift horse in the mouth and you, 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 you frown on it, the horse can back up and go. Mr. Nygaard don't have to be here. I'm not begging him to stay here, but it's the poor and the have-nots. Look at ZNS or even your community page. How much people do you see dying at doctor's hospital? That's where the rich people and the people with insurance go. You know where the people dying? Princess Margaret Mog. Because everybody who die, die there. For whatever reason, that's what it is. The minister of the leader of the opposition has to take a stance based on what is right and not what is political to try and get the government to stabilize. I believe Reverend Moss, he's serving the same type of interest as the opposition leader. I bet you Reverend Moss will try to run for another office or Chelly Moss. He just ran for office. Paul Moss, he just ran or wanted to run for office. Their political agendas, they carrying water for people to get back in down the road. This ain't no game people can see through them. I'm a recovering drug addict. You understand, every day that I live is a blessed day. I ain't hiding from nothing. I'm a law-abiding citizen. If I see something going wrong, I try and make it do what the responsible person would do. I believe in education as the way out of poverty, because poverty breeds hatred. Hatred breeds violence. You say C.B. Moss is, is carrying water for Bacon. He has no other reason. Yeah, but it can be said that you carry in water for Naga. No. Uh uh. I carry in water for Vivian Wiley. For Vivian Wiley. Mr. Naga, them can't pay me for putting my life on the line because I know the haters out there. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know that. I ain't no dumb fella. I ain't smarter than the smartest guy, but I ain't dumber than the dumbest guy. You understand where I'm coming from? Speaking out like this does put my life on the line. Okay? I don't have nothing to gain other than for the sake of putting something in a book to put in the schools for the school children. Write the history of Clifton. Okay? And the other part of it is, is I treat a friend like a friend. Mr. Nygaard has been a friend to the Bahamas. He don't get no special treatment from me. When I see him, it's just like I looking at you, brother. Uh -huh. Equal. Because a rich man had a, a, a grave of marble, and the poor man was covered in dirt. 
And I looked in the graveyard and I realized what the Creator was telling me. A rich dead man and a poor dead man still dead. I hear you. Vivian Riley, there was, there's a lot of talk about Peter and I got going into being town. And I saw on uh, one program, I, uh, or probably the news, uh, the exchange between himself and uh, C.B. Moss. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it. I was there. Oh, you were there? Mm -hmm. Well, t t tell us about that. Mr. Mr. Jones, when God comes, the wise ones will know. Because, like they said, Christmas, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. That's what the Christmas greeting is from the angels. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Reverend Moss is a minister of the gospel. That's why he have reverend voice, okay? If somebody is walking through my neighborhood with another reverend who was Dr. McPhee, same like name, Reverend Dr. Philip McPhee, Reverend Dr. C.B. Moss, right? Peter Nygaard is a multi-billionaire. He is looking through Bain Town to see how he can help. He was passing Reverend Moss's church. Reverend Moss pulled into the churchyard. I was there and come out to the front of the church. Nobody tried to go into Reverend Moss Church. Dr. Philip McPhee didn't recommend going into nobody's house but or did, building. But didn't, did, did, did you all go there expressly to no, see Dr. Moss? No, be passing and Reverend Moss pull up. That's only coincidental? Coincidental. That's what it appeared to me. Or he was following and waiting until my man reached by his church, then he pull up, right? But the police could tell you based on the police escort what we had, going to Reverend C.B. Moss Church wasn't on the, the permit to walk through because he had a permit, mm. okay? Then Reverend Moss takes the position of antagonism, antagonator. He huff and puff and, and do all of that, and I'm looking at him and I'm saying, but Reverend Moss, the gentleman said, hi, I'm, I'm happy to meet you. My name is Peter Nygaard. Watch the tape. And I, I am glad to meet you because I heard you saying a lot of things about me. Peter lived in Lightfoot Key, got his own jet, got his own everything. Could help Reverend Moss. Could help the people of Bain Town. Reverend Moss take on, like he make out a bulletproof, and he's swelling up in front of Mr. Nygaard, telling him, uh, the government say, well, Reverend Moss, you in the government, as a community leader, Reverend Moss, to me, miss the boat. Because if you come in my neighborhood, and I need all these things done, I ain't got time to worry about you and your neighbor fighting. I'm like, brother, Brother Jones, it's so good. Listen, man, I got some things I need to show you so that you can help me with. You understand where I'm coming from? If you looking out for the people. Reverend Moss looking out for Reverend Moss. He can't tell me no different because he had a perfect opportunity. Mr. Nygaard invited him out mm -hmm. to his property to see what's going on. I ain't going no there. Or he carried on like, you know something? I'm going to say something. My father and my mother are both dead. My father used to drink. And when he got drunk, he became belligerent. And that's exactly what I thought of when I saw the tape and the way Reverend Moss acted. He didn't listen to a word that was spoken to him. He had a pre ordained answer. 
He had a preordained position. He wasn't bending, wasn't moving. And how dare this white man come in Bain Town and confront me? He got it wrong. C.B. Um, uh, Moss was saying to Peter and I got that the FNM government uh, disallowed him uh, from doing some things at Nygaard Key because uh, of, of certain things that Nygaard had done that was offensive to the seabed, uh, that there was this um, uh, filling of land. Reverend uh, Moss needed to go do his homework, mm. okay? Because the last time I heard Life at Key, FNM government, the gate's still up in Life at Key. Yes. The homework he needed to do is... Well, that has to do with what he had to say with... The homework, in my mind, mm -hmm. what he has to do is... Now, that's the FNM government. Why would they have a reason to stop Mr. Nygaard? Yeah, but you're talking about the accretion because of the land. Because Mr. Nygaard... If, if, if the land was accreted... Hold on. Because Mr. Nygaard supports the PLP, everybody know that. That's why Reverend... That's why Dr. Minnis' position so... So, so, so mix up because I'm looking at stem cell as helping people for their health. And this man trying to cut the thing and say, this the PLP position and this the FNM position. That's what I'm talking about. So this thing has been politicized. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. It is no longer making any sense to me as the descendant of the people... I stand in front of a tractor, you know. Rev. Reverend Marston was when Albany was, what you, was mean you, what you mean you stand in front of a tractor? I stood in front of a tractor when they sent a tractor from the Ministry of Works to start breaking down the buildings at Clifton. Uh, and what happened? It's simple. I stand in front of the, the tractor and I tell the fellow, I say, no man, you all can't break this down. We, we preserving this as a historical site. And I stood up. And the fella look, he look, he read the thing, like move, move, and I sit right there. So he got on his phone and he called his boss, jump out the taxi, uh, out the out the out the tractor, and said, "Boy, you lucky, you know. You lucky." My boss said, "He coming out there now." By that time. There was a Tribune reporter named, back in the day, I had called them because I had heard that they were going to break down the walls. So the Tribune reporter came, Life and Key Police came, and the guy from the Ministry of Works came, and all of a sudden it got to the point where, okay, I told them I have this in court. You can't touch nothing here. Because the court hadn't come to the decision on who would get the settlement that, that ended up happening. So the case was still going. And I tell him, you can't touch nothing here. And that's what you have to do in, in, in extreme cases. Where it was. Where it was. See, when, when, when uh, Bell Island, which is a part of the Exuma Land and Sea Park, is still being allowed to get dredged. Okay? Where Reverend Morstam and the Save the Bay's people is? Where they is? When Albany was dredging the seabed, where they is? Huh? Where Kamalami Key, when they was dredging all around there, where were they? See, this is what I'm trying to show my people. Don't let scare flam from these bunch of dudes like Reverend Morstam who have political agendas. Dr. Minnis, who is already a politician, I call him a spade, a spade, Reverend Moss. And I challenge you, Lewis Bacon, Herbert Minnis, and all of y'all to come on a radio show or a TV show with me and everybody have their time to say face-to-face -to, -face to the nation what is really going on. I don't have no ax to grind. Peter Nygaard has something called stem cell. Guys, look in the camera. Look at that black spot. I have cancer. I bring in that out on your show. You understand? Why on God's earth 
would a man who say he's a medical doctor give up practicing medicine to go to be in parliament to stop progress for people like me? Why? They have political interests. That's what we're looking at, Bahamas. Don't mind these people. All of them fake it. Okay. Let's take this break here. This is the final break. And uh, I think you have something else to show me. We'll come right back. We're back here on the platform, and uh, we're speaking with Mr. Vivian Wiley in this last segment of our program. And Mr. Wiley, earlier on, we were talking about land that was accreted in uh, at Clifton, okay. and um, the government had said to um, Mr. Nygaard that he was uh, uh, accreted, that is the F&M government, mm -hmm. um, that um, because of this accreted land, uh, he was not giving, they were not giving him permission uh, to uh, develop his property. Mm -hmm. And um, he has asked for some crown land. I don't know. That is what um, I heard from uh, C.B. Moss's program. I don't, Mr. Mr. Jones, I don't propose to impose on the government. Mm. If it's a government matter, I don't have nothing to say. But what I'd like for the Bahamian people to know is what I showed you in the first segment. Mm -hmm. Louis Bacon cut a canal, yes. a channel for his boat. He parks his boat under his house in a raised position. Peter Nygaard has a mooring and the sun walks the beach and fills it in. Okay. Mr. Nygaard put up a, 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 a blockage to stop the sand from blocking his, he has a very expensive yacht. Let's look at uh, the, 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 the sand that you're talking about, because yeah. I believe you have that uh, information as well. Right, yes. what, what this is, is the sand mm -hmm. that everybody's complaining about. But Mr. Nygaard, Where is the sand? This sand is at Nygaard Key. Okay, the, the, the walk on the left side, that is the, the structure that was put up to stop the sand from filling in the marina, both his and Mr. Bacon's. Mm. Because if the sand doesn't get in his, it won't get in Mr. Bacon on. Mm. So this is a petty, again, grievance. See the structure right behind me? That's the structure that they want him to, to stop building. Is it as simple as that? It, it's simple as that. I'm not no big time college educated engineer, but I've lived in the Bahamas all my life. If you have a marina and you don't want it to fill up, this is the beach that happened. This beach happened as a result of the, 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 the canal and all of that sand would have constantly been going in the canal. Most of that beach there is, uh, was there naturally where the volleyball court is. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's part of the beach, Mr. Nygaard has had volleyball tournaments, um, international, a local volleyball team practices there um, to do their sand work. So all of this, this isn't about no sand. This is about Lewis Bacon being mad. If he didn't chop up the seabed the way his own chop up, he would have had a beach. Tell me, if, if this wall wasn't there, then that sand would have moved where? If this wall wasn't there, it would have gone right back into that channel where Mr. Nygaard has his boat and into Mr. Bacon's channel. Mm. I see. And so you, you decided to do this uh, video. To show the local people. Remember, you don't get in the back of Life with Key unless you have permission or invitation. C.B. Moss can't show you this because he ain't never been there. And you got in the back here on uh, this? Nygaard Key. Nygaard's Key. Because I was telling Mr. Nygaard, I am the person who challenged the, the government and the Clifton Key developers. Okay? I am the person that got Clifton to be a World Heritage Site. Peter Nygaard is only protecting what is his. See, see the wall right there? That's the wall under contention. Okay? 
This is what the Bahamian people need to see. See the house over there? That is Louis Bacon's house. Okay? That is his house. And he's saying that if that wall was in there, his beach would be there. But I'm going to show you. Go on. If that wall was in there, the whole area where Mr. Nygaard parks his boat would fill up with what, Mr. Jones? With sand. You have a $10 million yacht and you're not going to protect it? Mr. Bacon, same thing. It would fill up with sand. They, yeah, they have a, they, he may have something to say about it, the sand not moving, but he has to be practical. If I have my boat in my marina and sand keep filling it in, what, am I, what are you going to do, Mr. Jones? You can stop the sand. This ain't no environmental disaster. This is common sense. It, I, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out this is not about Mr. Peter Nygaard and son. Get to the bottom of it. Peter Nygaard allows black people from Baintown, Nassau Village, Fox Hill, Grantstown, Yellow Elder, in the back of Lightfoot Key. The richest people in Lightfoot Key are the five or six people who live on the road leading to Mr. Nygaard's house. That's what this is about. Stop the black traffic. This Lightfoot Key, not Negro Key, what they think they doing, where they think they is, who he think, talking about Peter Nygaard, who he think he is. That's what this is about. And anybody who could tell me C.B. Moss being here, see? Look, look at it. The school scholarships, all this money they spend in both Save Clifton Bay, get out to the Ministry of Education. Let the, the school fees of the College of Bahamas just went up. BTVI. Where a fella can get $500 to pay for a course to do auto mechanics from in BTVI and he just barely finished school and got to go to BTVI. You understand where I'm coming from? These men, Mr. Menace and all of them, have an agenda. The Bahamas is for Bahamians first. I know f and M. I I know PLP sitting in the seat. I am a Bahamian citizen. Mm -hmm. You understand? And what I see going on in my country, the FNM saying, Peter Nygaard using Perry, but I put it to Hubert Bennett that he doing Lewis Bacon work. Mm. So, who's the better or who's the worse? At least Peter Nygaard loves Bahamians. And I'm going to qualify that. Black Bahamians, if they want to get anything, it ain't about the PLP and the FNM. Hubert, Dr. Minnis, this is about black people going in the back of life with key. Reverend Moss, this ain't about no sun. This is about toting water for people and saying what they want you to say. Peter Nygaard could tell you all, I is the wrongest one to try and tell me what to say, as you could see tonight. Yeah, CB, and all y'all, y'all call me the loose cannon because y'all can't control me, and y'all ain't gonna say what y'all want me to say. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I acted as a child, and I did childish things. Now I am a man, I speaking to you as a man. I acting like a man, and I doing things that men do. Speak the truth, and I make the devil falter. Well, what should the government do? The government should pass the stem cell bill. Yeah, but this ain't got nothing to do with stem cell, what you're talking about. You, this has to do you with... You see how mixed up and convoluted it is? This has to do with access to, 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 to Peter's my God key. The government? No, this has to do with land. The row has to do with land, right? Ain't got to do with you, you see how confusing this is? This so confusing. In in regards to your question, yeah. the government should. If I were the government, yes. 
They should allow Mr. Nygaard to rebuild his home because he loves living in the Bahamas. His mm -hmm. children live here. Mm -hmm. You understand? Some of mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. He is happy in the Bahamas. Okay, let's put it this way. What if the Atlantis burned down? Would they allow Saul Kirchner to rebuild, you think? Yeah. If your house burned down, would they allow you to rebuild? If C.B. Moore's house burned down, Menace, my house, shouldn't they be, be allowed to rebuild? If Richard Lightburn's house burned down, wouldn't he want to rebuild? Why not let Peter Nygaard rebuild his house? I ain't getting paid to say this, you know. Right is right, and wrong is wrong, Mr. Jones. But I the, carry my own burden. But the former government say we, we allow you to rebuild when you restore the land, that land that the same piece How that you, them you, you, you're looking at right now. Listen, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. My mother got fired from Bahamas Air not long after they tried to form a Wakers Union at Bahamas Air, and she was one of the signature gatherers. In the Bahamas, there's political payouts as well as political punishments. According to who side of the government, you, and you know this, I ain't gonna call no name right, so we don't have to get no blame. Mm -hmm. But according to who in the government, certain people get favors, certain people get punished. It's that simple, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, PLP all the way. People wouldn't dare to be no UBP after 1967 and be black. One or two did, but the majority know if you want to get some of this, you got to be with the PLP. If, see, I don't want to go on, I, I don't like politics. I don't. Because if you were to see me ever run for office, the first thing I can do is tell the people now, nah, you know I running, right? If you don't vote for me, don't come to me for no help. That ain't practical, but that's Vivian Wiley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that is how they run the government, whether they like to admit it or not. Look at Loretta Butler Turner. She was all for stem cell about three weeks ago, you know. Now, she take the party, she get whip in line. I studied political science. I got accepted to law school. You understand where you're coming from? Lawyers, to me, need to practice morality law as opposed to criminal law or civil law or ethical law, as you might call it. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of cases, lawyers are the solution, but lawyers are also the problem. And when a House of Assembly is full of lawyers, Peter Nygaard runs an empire with a budget as big as our country. We'd be fools not to be advised by people like him, if not on a daily basis, just in general. You're a businessman. They should make you an advisor to the government because you, you, you feel the pulse of the people. You understand there are things that a billionaire has experienced that I can't tell you about. Why? Because I am not a billionaire. And the Bahamian people have this attitude that they could just talk about a man who turned $8,000 into a couple billion dollars like though he just is an everyday conversation. That is what, why I'm speaking out. This man ain't no everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. He could help. You, 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 you seem to think that um, you, you seem to think that. Uh, oh, that's bacon. You see how big his house is? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Okay. I don't want to worry about how big his house is. Um, uh, you, 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 you seem to think that um, Peter and I got is getting a bad deal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He getting a bad deal. You know why? He is bringing something that can help us. If you take Peter Nygaard away from the gift, the gift remains to help everybody. This ain't about no Peter Nygaard. God chooses who we may. 
Jesus rode an ass into Jerusalem. Not a horse. Not on the shoulders of men. An ass. Mm -hmm. Okay? Meaning? Yeah, what that means. The, they say the donkey was stupid and was only good enough to carry burdens. That's what they speak of us. That's why they call them donkeys. Mm -hmm. But he carried the Son of God. That's why. That's why. He carried the greatest burden he could have carried. The Son of the living God. And if Peter Nygaard is the person to bring the Bahamas into the research of the stem cell and the rest of that, because we have the Bahamas, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas per capita has the highest rate of cancer in the world. You didn't know that. Breast cancer, I'm sorry. Mm. In the world. What are they talking about? You know something? Why would a man who is a medical doctor give up practicing medicine to go make a stupid fool out of himself in the Rawson Square restaurant and bar? It doesn't make sense. You're, degre you're, you're degrading the House of Parliament? I didn't say the House of Parliament. That's what you think I meant? Well, that's what you... Uh, that's I ain't degrading it. And if you... The Bahamas, they act as though, instead of it being the House of Assembly, it is the Rawson Square Bar and Restaurant. Because I'm not calling it that this is how the people in it act, like they in a bar. Mind you, Mr. Jones, the speaker said, order, mm -hmm. take your seat. Mm -hmm. The speaker is a symbol of authority in our country. And he can't get a minister or a member who in the chambers, where he is supposed to be the authority to obey him. The only place that has happened is where? In a bar. And you know what can happen next, right? The one at the bar say, man, if you can't behave, you got to go. You know, Ali, um, I thank you for being here today, but you know, we got to stop this rowing, you know. I row. No, no, not you. Like not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the, this feud going on in life with key between Nygaard and Bacon. That has to come to an end. It will. It will come to an end. Yes. When do you think so? Very soon. Very soon. The Prime Minister of our country is the head of our government. Mm -hmm. Whether we are PLP, FNM, uh, what the other party name? The Green Party? The DNA. The DNA. Whether we is the Vanguard or Independent, uh -huh. the country is no greater than its citizens. And if we keep tearing each other down, it ain't only the Prime Minister would could feel it, but everybody who live abroad, when they talk about the Bahamas, they have negative things to say. We must understand that the Bahamas is a progressive nation. And in 40 years, Mr. Jones, we have done a lot. For all the naysayers who think we going backwards, uh -uh. with God in control, we could only be marching the Zion. Thank you so very much for being here today. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank right, you so very much. I didn't have to ask you too many questions uh, because you've been very passionate in what you, what you believe. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for watching and listening to our program today. Good evening, everyone. Thank you.